you everyone for being here and for the privilege of your time. I'm gonna spend a few minutes setting the context of why this work is very important in the here and now. And throughout the day, there was a lot of talk about this is our time, this is our moment. And it reminds me of another huge movement that people of color had in South Africa, the apathy movement. And they had a phrase, their mantra, was something called Sekunja Lokinako. Loosely translated, now is the time. Ladies and gentlemen, now is the time for black and brown entrepreneurs in the clean energy sector. And I'm gonna try and explain to you why. Today in the United States, half the country is burning with wildfires, while the other half is flooding with tropical storms. This is not global warming. This is forced climate transformation as a result of our actions of being industrialized. And climate is not the issue. It is the one issue that involves all other issues. In the 1980s, we used to spend $18 billion a year cleaning up the climate disasters. And then the weather intensified, and then things got worse. In the 90s, that number went up to $27 billion a year. In the 2000s, it exploded to $52 billion a year. In the 2010s, it went up to $81 billion a year. This is in our lifetime. And in the last five years, that number has skyrocketed to $121 billion a year we're spending after cleaning after Ma and Andrew Mother Nature. When the cost goes above $100 billion a year, that is no longer a disaster. That is a catastrophe. We cannot continue on this trajectory. And when these climate disasters hit our power systems, businesses go bankrupt. State and city governments are stressed, right? But most importantly, American families and their health and wealth is put at risk. And of the people that are affected the most by these disasters, it's disproportionately blacks, Latinos, and indigenous communities that are hit the hardest and the longest. This summer alone, over 100 million Americans were under a heat wave alert. Those that were not able to evacuate after Hurricane Ida in Mississippi and Louisiana had to endure weeks of triple degree temperatures while waiting for the power to come back on. This is not sustainable. And it is for this reason that our amazing panelists have dedicated their lives to make the difference where it counts the most. Dexter is leading the charge in democratizing access to electric vehicles. His company is now in 19 states and is growing like wildfire. Gilbert is at the cutting edge of bringing large-scale affordable solar systems to our communities, but also doing it in such a way that it creates economic prosperity, right? And he just signed the historic 250 megawatt deal with Microsoft. Can we clap for him? Please? And in addition to that, he has an impact fund that does a lot of economic development work. So that it's not about the energy, it's about jobs, about skills training. And Mina, a real life rocket scientist, is on the frontier of making high performance buildings more efficient. I'm talking the largest airport in North America. And she makes them energy efficient, often beyond their wildest dreams. And my brother, Reggie, is on the cutting edge of solar technology. This gentleman has developed a technology that makes solar technology 21 times faster to install, 40% cheaper, and using dual access trackers can achieve an efficiency of 47%. The golden industry standard is 17%. Can we clap one? I am Robert Cabrera, Cabrera with a K, and for my contribution, I am the founder and president of Sync Energy AI, a climate tech platform that allows cities, municipalities, insurance companies, 
and natural disaster response companies to visualize weather-related disasters on the map up to six months in advance, up to 97% accuracy. So for any event, Hurricane Ida or any of such major events, we are able to reduce customer disruptions by 90% and also prevent damages by 40%. Our goal is to move society from being reactive to being proactive. But not only just proactive, the second part is very important. All these bold visions and efforts require a resource that has long been denied to minority-led entrepreneurs that is efficient access to capital. I was just talking to Dexter last night, and in his previous round of fundraising, he talked to over 200 venture capitalists. That mostly dismissed him as nothing more than just entertainment. I, for my part, in my current round, have talked to over 120 venture capitalists that I have made sort of the same fate. And so part of the urgent call to action here today is that the investment community, both private and public, make a concerted effort to invest in visionary entrepreneurs such as the panelists today, who are really making a difference where it matters the most. American lives are at stake and are in danger. And so we need a more resilient, a more equitable, a more just energy system. Simply put, we need to back more entrepreneurs of color in this space. Yeah. And so as I said in the beginning, Sekunjalo Kinamo, now is the time. So Harry, the floor is yours. Yeah.